Hello, Assalamu alaikum to all. Today we are going to study the pharmacology of a drug called dexamethasone, which is going to be very helpful in treating COVID-19. It is the first and only drug that significantly improves survival in COVID-19 patients. So let's start. Dexamethasone is a synthetic corticosteroid. Now firstly, what is mean by corticosteroids? Corticosteroids are actually the hormones that are naturally released in our body. On the top of each kidney, we have a glands on them. Then gland is known as adrenal gland. Ad, renal. Ad means on and renal means kidney. So it is a gland that present on the kidney, on the top of each kidney. And that adrenal gland has two main parts. The outer part is known as adrenal cortex while the inner part is known as adrenal medulla. Adrenal cortex is that part that releases corticosteroids. And these corticosteroids have a number of functions in our body. They are involved in the metabolism of carbohydrate, proteins, fat, and, cl and clinically they mainly use as an anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive agent. So dexamethasone is a synthetic corticosteroids and those corticosteroids that, that are naturally released in our body that are endogenous, they include glucocorticoids and, and mineralocorticoids that also are of various types. It is approved by FDA in 1958. As it is synthetic one, so obviously it is much more strong and potent than endogenous corticosteroids. Potent indicating potency. Potency means the ability of a drug to bind into its receptor. And dexamethasone is highly potent than endogenous corticosteroids. They bind 20 to 30 times more strongly than the endogenous corticosteroid to its corticoid receptors. Now, how dexamethasone works? In clinical scenario, it works as an anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive agent. Now, how it inhibit inflammation, how it causes immunosuppression? To understand that concept, firstly we have to understand the basic mechanism of inflammation. Means what are the mediators of inflammation, what causes inflammation, how dexamethasone acts on it and inhibit inflammation. So here is the pictorial diagram of inflammatory mechanism. As you can see here, Basically what happens when our cells become dead or injured, they release some chemicals that include histamine, prostaglandin, bradykinin and these chemicals send signals. They send signals to the vessels around that tissue, around that injured tissue number one to become more dilate and second to become more permeable. Okay, to become more dilated and to become more permeable due to, due to increase in dilation and increase in permeability, the fluid in the vessel get, fluid, they get leaked out into the tissues. There is a fluid deposition out of the vessel that results in swelling of the tissue or you can say edema or cure. Secondly, these chemicals also attract our infection fighting leukocytes. Our infection fighting leukocytes that are also called inflammatory cells and these cells including platelets, basophils, monocytes, macrophages and these cells, these inflammatory cells get, can get traveled to the site of injury and when they get entry into the site of injury they, they undergo phagocytosis. They undergo phagocytosis and consume over dead tissues or you can say injured tissues and cell debris. So this is the basic mechanism of inflammation. Now view dexamethasone and view it acts on. The anti-inflammatory mechanism of dexamethasone is, is very complex but primarily it inhibits the activity of inflammatory cells and it suppresses the activity of inflammatory mediator. The inflammatory mediator may include our chemicals that make our vessels permeable and dilate. And this anti-inflammatory property of dexamethasone uses widely clinically. It is used in a number of diseases which will be discussed in the next slide. Clinical uses of dexamethasone. As I told you, it relieves inflammation. It relieves swelling, heat, redness, pain. So we can use it in acute inflammatory bubble disease or you can say intestinal disorder including 
including Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. We can use in certain types of arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. Or we can use in those cases that having inflammation around tumors in bone, spine and brain. And we can use dexamethasone in swelling and allergic type reactions like allergic rhinitis, transfusion allergic reactions, allergic anaphylactic shock, allergic anaphylactic shock that includes the symptoms of trouble, breathing, facial swelling, heaves or nausea or vomiting. Additionally, as an immunosuppressive agent, it is first line agent in acute rejection. So we can use dexamethasone in cases of aplastic anemia, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, hemolytic anemia, and dexamethasone is one of the integral component of most immunosuppressive protocols for both induction and maintenance. Additionally, we can use dexamethasone in certain types of cancer including leukemia, lymphoma and multiple myeloma plus dexamethasone also used clinically in Addison's disease. It is used to replace steroids in condition of adrenal insufficiency means there is a low production of needed steroids produced by adrenal gland. And last, it used in PONV means post-operative nausea vomiting. Dexamethasone is one of the most commonly used antiemetic. It acts on glucocorticoid receptor rich bilateral NTS. NTS means nucleus of solitary tract that is vomiting center. We can use dexamethasone for the prophylaxis of PONV and it is safe and effective. Its IV dose is 5 to 10 mg for adults and 0.15 to 1 mg per kg for children. Can, can be administered before or after the induction of anesthesia or right at the beginning of surgery. But it has been noticed that it is more effective when given at the beginning rather than at the end of surgery. Now, dexamethasone in the era of COVID-19. If we talk about COVID-19, so dexamethasone is effective for those who are at high risk, means who needs oxygen or mechanical ventilation. Dexamethasone doesn't appear to help those who have milder symptoms. It is beneficial for those who have breathing problems that require oxygen or ventilatory support and it reduces mortality in these type of cases. According to the recovery trial for COVID-19, it has been shown that dexamethasone could reduce COVID-19 patient death risk by one third. It has been evidenced that at the dose of 6 mg once a day for up to 10 days, it reduces 28 day mortality in patients receiving respiratory support. Now, how dexamethasone works in COVID? It works because it has targeting properties. It has anti-swelling properties, means it prevent fluid accumulation. It has anti properties, means it inhibit the accumulation of scar tissue. It reduces fibrosis. Basically, dexamethasone works by dampening down the body's immune system. Coronavirus triggers inflammation as the body tries to fight it off but sometime what happens our immune system goes into overdrive called cytokine storm and it proves deadly because the body starts to attack the own cells so in covid-19 due to cytokine storm inflammation occur that causes diffuse lung damage so what dexamethasone do it modulates inflammation that results in a lung damage or lung injury that reduces progression to respiratory failure and death. Now, did you know guys, long term use of corticosteroid can cause osteoporosis, diabetes and cataracts? Side effects, the ugly side of dexamethasone. But don't worry, the side effects depends upon the dose administered and duration of its use. 
at high doses they cause side effects although it has favorable benefit risk profile the side effects are listed here including hyperglycemia means increase in blood sugar so the patient having diabetes may need to have blood sugar level monitored more closely and possible adjustment to diabetic medication must occur glaucoma and cataract fluid retention hypertension psychological effects weight gain increased risk of infection because dexamethasone dampening down the immune response so the patient may prone to infections and the last one but not least osteoporosis means the thinning of the bones